This week, we have on the podcast East High's Devil in Green Eyes. He's a multi-award winning singer, performer, <laughs> uh, actor. He rose to stardom conquering Wildcat's heart in High School Musical, the musical, the series, season one, and is now going back to East High for season two. Everyone, welcome to the show, Matt Corbett. <laughs> The net proceeds from this episode will directly benefit the Actors Fund. Make sure you check out the description below and click on their website to find out more. Hey, what's hey. up? Is that good? A cute intro? I, I, I liked it. I liked the, uh, the devil, what is it, devilish green eyes? Is that what you said? Devil, devil in green, green eyes. eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. I you feel. Know, I feel. You should use it. Like new Instagram bio. It. Throwing it out there. Just that's it. Just devil in <laughs> <Yeah>. green eyes. <laughs> yeah. I got you. I got you. Oh, Mental health checkup. How are we feeling? How's life treating us? Life's great, man. I'm uh, I'm in a quarantine right now because I'm I'm about to start working on a new project that I can't say anything Ooh. about. But I'm I'm in a quarantine and I'm on day 13 of 14, and I'm uh, my my mental state is is borderline insane. Mm. Um, I'm I'm this is definitely the longest I've been without human to human like in person interaction yeah. and without going outside, and it's it's brutal. <laughs> is it? Are you in Vancouver? I think you're in Vancouver, right? I'm in Toronto. Toronto. Oh my yeah, god. Toronto. Oh, you're right next to me. I'm in Montreal right now. Hey, nice. Yeah. Okay. Sick. Oh my. Okay, so I have suspicions on what you're working on. Um, but we'll we'll keep it quiet just to not yeah. spoil anything for anyone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you know, you've done a lot of press in the past few days. I mean, that's been good since you've been quarantined. You kind of. It has given me, yeah, it has given me some stuff to do, luckily. And I've got a puzzle right here, actually. I'm I've on this table that my computer's on. I've been working on a puzzle, some video games. Come you on, know, puzzles. life's good. <laughs> yeah, all about yeah. the puzzles, man. I've only got the border figured out, but, um, you know. I believe you. I believe in you, for sure. Uh, for thanks, sure. Thanks. I have to say I'm super pumped to have you on because uh, I've heard through the grapevines, uh, well, through some of my friends who are out in L.A. that you're a really cool dude. So I was just like, oh, my God, I can't wait to talk to Matt. That's going to be a good time. Oh, go. A good time. Of course. So before we jump into anything, um, you play EJ on High School Musical, the musical, the series. I just want to know how you got the part. I feel like I asked everybody this and can get good perspective on how the auditioning process goes. Yeah. Yeah, the auditioning process was uh, pretty intense and really long. I actually originally auditioned for Ricky. <laughs> and really? uh, yeah, I mean, didn't go in my favor, uh, clearly. <laughs> um, they met a guy named Joshua Bassett and, you know, yeah, it was out for me <laughs> since that moment. But uh, yeah. yeah, no, it was it was super fun. Um, I think I went in for Ricky, I want to say twice, but I don't remember, honestly. I, I know I went in for it. And then I hadn't heard anything for a couple months. And so, okay. you know, I, like as most actors do, you audition for something. And if you don't hear, you kind of just throw it to the back of your mind and try to forget about it. So you don't get like locked on something and then, you know, it really stings when you don't get it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so I hadn't heard anything for a minute. You know, I really wanted this one. It, it seemed super fun. And, and uh, I hadn't heard anything. So I kind of just like tucked it to the back of my brain. And then like three months went by and they were like, hey, my agents were like, hey, they want you to come back in and, and read for this role, EJ. And I was like, oh, sweet. OK, yeah. um, went back in. And, and I think I went through like four different auditions through that with like an audition again, call back and then producer session um, and then a session with like, uh, you know, the guys that created the show. And then um, I had a chemistry with Julia Lester and then a chemistry with Josh and Olivia. And it was it was definitely long and hectic, but uh I think that, that process after my first EJ audition took like two, two and a half months. Wow. I mean, you can just tell yourself like through that entire process, it was you all along. You know what I mean? I mean, listen, I try not, I try to keep my head, you know, small here, <laughs> but, uh, it's it's definitely it's definitely a humbling uh or, or not humbling i guess it's a it's a blessed feeling knowing that mm -hmm. uh you know there i i got lucky enough to have gotten this role out of a, a lot of people that auditioned yeah i mean disney's very particular about casting so uh when yeah you get you know a, a you know a very intense auditioning process you know you got the good stuff right 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 yeah no yeah. disney's <laughs> disney definitely works works you hard in those auditions oh for sure in a good way sure. in a good way yeah, because they want to get the best of the best for 
whatever parts yeah. they have going on. And what was your audition song, out of curiosity? <laughs> I sang Perfect by Ed Sheeran. Sheeran? Oh. Sheeran. She um, <laughs> Ed Sheeran. Yeah, uh, yeah. Played my guitar with it. Had the little chords there because I still hadn't had it memorized at that point. So I, mm. I wrote down the chords on the back of my uh, audition sides and put them on the ground and sat there and played Perfect and, and sang along. And it was great. Good song choice. I appreciate a good Thanks. song choice for sure, for sure. Um, yeah. So, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> no, 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 you're good. I was just going to say I love country music, and it was hard not to pick a country song. But, you know, Ed Sheeran, I was like, I've got to pick something that's not country because these people are not going to like country. So, uh, you know, Ed Sheeran, everyone likes Ed Sheeran. I don't appreciate the bad rap that country music gets. I really don't. I mean, I listen, I, I grew up in the South. I love country music, but I also understand people that don't like it. Um, you know, I'm never a fan of people that hate on, on anything, but mm. uh, I, I can understand some people not enjoying country music because there's, there's even sometimes some songs that I'm like, Ugh. <laughs> I love country music. I feel like all the guests that I've had, I always ask like, oh my God, what's your favorite type of music? And a lot of them say country music, but it's kind of like something you keep on the down low. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, it is definitely mm -hmm. something you keep on the mm -hmm. down Because yeah. a, lot of people, a lot of people are just like, oh, you listen to country music. Oh, that's, uh, okay. <laughs> it's like, well, country's no, good. good. You got to get the good country. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So High School Musical, the musical of the series, season two, no country music in that, as far as I'm no. concerned, I think. Um, <laughs> by the time this episode season will come three. out, yeah, <laughs> could you imagine, though, like a country song? <laughs> Every, everything is just country in season three. Oh, my God. People would hate it. Well, or love oh, it, you know? <laughs> you never know. It would you never you know, <laughs> for sure. And, like, by the time this episode comes out, episode one to three will be out, uh, which I've gotten Sweet. a chance to see. Amazing, amazing episodes. Uh, what's exciting about EJ's storyline this time around? Because in the first season, it was kind <laughs> of like he was he was kind of the villain a little bit in the beginning and then kind of had a little redemption moment at the end. And now this time around, that story arc is over. So, like, yeah, moving forward, what's exciting about the character? Yeah, I think that's I think that's kind of something that's super important for EJ uh, is kind of his his change between season one and season two, and and the fact of like season one he was so um, I want to say self centered he he just kind of like thought everything that he did he thought about himself first rather than mm. thinking about how it would impact others and how it was going to affect others mm. um, because if it affected him positively then that's you know what he whatever. Um, and he also kind of, you know, was putting on this fake persona of trying to be this perfect person and, and show that, oh, I've got everything in my life figured out, which it's okay to not have everything in your life figured yeah. out. I don't have everything in my life figured out. No one does. Um, so no, literally no one. So no one does. he had that kind of persona. And, uh, yeah, I think this season he definitely is kind of coming down to earth a little bit and realizing yeah. that everything's not about you. And it's okay to have flaws and it's okay to not have life figured out. And especially, um, you know, he's, he's, you know, second semester senior, he's trying to kind of figure out what's next for himself in this, in this next, uh, you know, chapter of his life. And, mm -hmm. um, I, nobody knows only, you know, the writers and <laughs> Disney know what could possibly be next for, for EJ. But, uh, yeah, I think he's trying to kind of just figure out what's next. And, and, you know, he's got this, this, um, you know, school that his whole family has gone to, his mm -hmm. grandpa went to, his, you know, his dad went to, it's like, it, like his family is, you know, this school. And um, so he, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I couldn't, I wasn't going to say it cause I couldn't remember if in the first three episodes he says Duke. Yeah. But, Duke, um, North Carolina for sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, no, he, uh, he definitely is, is really wanting to get, to get into the school and, and, you know, that's just something that he wants to make his family proud um, so yeah, but he kind of tries to navigate his next chapters and starts to realize that these people around him is what he really cares about. And he, you know, he's really not ready to leave them and not ready to kind of finish school where I, I think he originally probably thought he would be ready to, to get out of high school and move on. Mm. But now he's starting to realize that he really loves these people and, and this group and he's just not ready. All right. He's back. Good. <laughs> I'm sorry you had to go through that. I, I'm it's assuming you have a it's... lot. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's gonna it's I mean three times a week. So it's uh this is the first one though that I've had I've had actually I think he just knocked again. He may have forgotten something. Okay, now I'm actually back. 
Oh, you're good. You're good. I think. I hope. <laughs> if he knocks um, again, we'll welcome him in. I'm just like, hey, come on in. Come join. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come join. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's – it's this is my – that was my first, like, in-person one. So uh, that was – literally, that's the first human interaction I've had in 13 days. And oh, congratulations. it was so nice. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I know. It's a big step. It's a big step in my life. A big step, um, for sure. All right. Yeah. I think we were – okay, good. I got my spot. All right, so – Sweet. Um, we talk about college. EJ's going to Duke. He's mentioning Duke a lot, which I'm assuming he'll have, like – I feel like his future is not as clear as he thinks it's going to be. Um, right. Has there been, uh, like, discussions about, like, your characters graduating technically that year on, on High School Musical? Some some students like to take gap years. Uh, has there been conversation about the potential future of your character? Honestly, I not with me um okay. i the amount of times that i've wanted to talk to tim federley and ask you know yeah. ask him kind of um hey what's what's the plan for ej in in a possible you know third season or you know mm -hmm. future of the show and uh i've wanted to ask him so many times because i have no clue i know he has like so many different ideas and i know he's personally told me before like um, you know, he's got ideas to keep EJ around and there's, you know, he's, he's, he's a smart, he's a smart guy. So I think That's he's I got hear. that figured out. So it's just a matter of, yeah, it's just a matter of, you know, them just trying to kind of figure out what works in, in the storyline of things. For sure. I mean, uh, I think Frankie and I had this idea together of like, what if they did like Glee, you know, in Glee, they graduate, but they go to college and they follow them to exactly. college. Exactly. Come on. Or, Disney. or we always, we always all talked about wanting to do like a summer camp season. Like we thought a summer camp season would be so much fun. Camp prop is, sh uh, is shaking. But yeah. yeah, I have, yeah, I don't exactly. I don't know mm -hmm. if, if that's something that, you know, they would, would ever do, but I think it would be so much fun just doing like a summer camp. That'd be amazing. I'm rooting for it. Or just like they go um on like a tour of some sort, like, you know, the winner yeah. of the, I don't know, like I brainstorming. Disney, I got you. I got you. You need some ideas? Yes. I got you, for sure. Yes, now, yes. I asked the, some of your fans, like, okay, what are, what is one thing you want to hear from Matt, one question you want answered? And so many of them said, what is EJ's name? Because <laughs> it's EJ. Uh, honestly, everyone is going to be so disappointed in this. Um, I don't know. I don't Let's know. Let's come up with I one. Know, I know a name that uh, that once again I was talking with Tim Federley and you know he kind of mentioned a name, but I think there was a plan and of some way of kind of revealing that, and so I don't want to say what that name was. But then again, okay. I also talked to him at the end of season two about it, and I was like, "Hey, is this still kind of a thing for?" And he was like, "Oh, actually, we never got around to that this this season. What kind of for?" So I I don't know if that's like a plan to like like reveal EJ's real name um, to everyone. But I have a feeling that EJ does stand for something and EJ is a, is a self-given nickname. <laughs> I feel like it's, yeah. he, he probably, he probably um, there's something about the name that he didn't like and he felt like EJ was cooler. I don't know, but um, okay. we'll see. I, I, I hope the name that uh, you know I was told is is real, but I don't know if it is, and I'm probably gonna you know get yelled at by Tim for even saying that much. So <laughs> <laughs> wait, can I put can I put my my hat in the rink on guessing what his name is, and then we'll yes. reconvene season three. Like I'm okay, down. so Jay has to stand for James. I feel like it's a very like middle name kind of situation. Yeah. Okay. First name. I feel like if he didn't like it, it would be like maybe something like Edward, but I feel like a cool name would be Elijah James Caswell. Elijah James. How yeah. sick. Yeah. That's a How sick name. Sick. Elijah right? James. I like Elijah. I like the name Elijah. I like the name James. Um, there you go. Yeah, no, that's great. I'm not even going to say what, you know, something no, don't. could be because I can't <laughs> think of anything other than the one name yeah, I yeah. know. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we'll see. We'll see. Se season three, I'll reconvene to this. I'll post the great. clip. And if I'm if I'm wrong, well, that will be embarrassing, you know? And mm -hmm. if you're right, then you, you know, need to get paid for your naming EJ. So I'm ready. I'm waiting for my paycheck. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, season one, EJ gets to sing, uh, I think, the most controversial song of the first season. I think it's like you love to hate it because, like, it's meant to be like EJ's, like, poor attempt at, like, right, right, right. getting Nini to take him back. What are your true feelings on A Billion Sorries? Are you, like, a lover or a hater of the song? 
You know, I, I'm, it was so much fun to film. It was so yeah. much fun to film. And when Tim first, first showed me the, uh, the demo for it, I was like, Oh my Lord, this is going to be so hilarious. <laughs> and I think, I think that's the thing. I mean, I, you kind of got to take it, you know, and it with a grain of salt. Cause it, it was meant to be his, like you said, his kind of poor, funny attempt at yeah. trying to write a song for Nini. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's kind of the, it shows the sheer contrast between Ricky and EJ because Ricky, when he writes a song for Nini, it's good. And it's when EJ, yeah, exactly. When EJ <laughs> tries to write a song for, for Nini, it's, uh, it's, well, it's a billion sorries. And <laughs> I think it's, I think it's a great song just to like bop around to, but, uh, -huh. uh I, you know, I think people do uh, need to keep in mind that it was supposed to kind of be like a, a EJ's poor attempt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, think... I mean, I there are a lot of people that say they bop to it in the car, and honestly, you too. Thanks in guys. the Chevy. Yeah, thanks. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> a billion stars now i like that i like the song when i heard it the first time i was just like oh my god this is hilarious and when i like when you listen to it more it kind of grows on you and you're kind of like you know what we appreciate it we appreciate the song there was also a it. lot of there was a lot of voice cracks happening when i was recording that and uh <laughs> i think they left a few of them and i was like oh no oh no, oh, no. <laughs> they did you dirty <laughs> ah it's okay it's it's just ej trying to write a song it's no big deal i like it I think it's a good, it's a, it's a decent song. Have you ever had a situation in your personal life where you wish you could have just sang a billion sorries to someone? Do you have a situation that comes to mind? Um, yeah, maybe, maybe not a billion sorries, but definitely an apology <laughs> song. Yeah, I yeah, feel yeah. like if I ever actually sang a billion sorries to somebody, they'd be like, get, get, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> just break out into song. Oh, that'd be good. Literally. That'd be good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, next time I need to apologize to, to someone, I'm just going to start singing a billion sorries. And I, I really hope they've never seen the show and they don't know the song. That'll make it that much better. Yeah, because they'll think like you came up with the song. Exactly. For exactly. them. You're mine, I'll do the Matt. exact dance that I do in, in the show. <laughs> jump on the table. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it'll be great. <laughs> Season two, um, High School Musical, I have to say, the first three – I mean – I talked to Larry in March. That was when we filmed our episode. And he was like, oh, season two is like so much better than season one, which is hard mm. to believe because season one was very successful, very good. Like all I want was topping charts. Like mm. I think High School Musical was trending every Friday when they, it was coming out <laughs> on Disney Plus. Like that's wild. And it truly does top it in some wild way. Um, it's, yeah. It's, it's crazy. The songs, the dance numbers – um has there been any like interactions that we're gonna get in season two with ej that you don't think he's gotten to do much in season one like characters he's conversing with yeah i think i think there's a lot more um maybe not more there there's some more stuff kind of with ricky that i think super fun and i think that's something yeah. that, that was really fun because a lot of the stuff in season one ej and ricky was kind of just you know butting heads, heads. and yeah. in this season they there's still the rivalry and the competition you know between them two but um they kind of do come together a lot more to uh you know understand each other and kind of i want to say be there for each other but I think they both kind of still don't know if they if they really are down to be bros yet. Um, okay. Okay. Although J Josh and I love playing that, like it's it's so much fun to get to hate your best friend. Um, yeah. So yeah, but uh, yeah, there's I mean there's a bunch of stuff. I, I a lot of my stuff last season um, in season one was with uh, Julia Lester and Olivia Rodrigo. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I mean there's some new stuff. There's some new. Um, kind of scenes with everybody honestly i feel like it's pretty evenly spread and uh you know larry and i uh get to do something super fun i believe in episode four um that's super super fun mm -hmm. um so yeah I, I i mean i'm just super excited for people to see that and, and just kind of the rest of the season because like you said season two is so much better than season one and season mm -hmm. one was great like we're so proud of it yeah um but season two for like the writing, the the numbers, the music, and just like everybody's performances, it's just like it took season one and just like like it was like they were trying to like turn it up one notch, but accidentally slipped and turn it up like fifty notches. Oh yeah, um, it's it's so good and it just gets better as the season goes on. Oh no, it's it's truly with the first three episodes, you you get like okay, 
okay, well, you come for the first season's neck. Like, the first season's yeah. dead. Like, even though we yeah. love the first season, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. A different a different take on on season two now larry has mentioned that uh filming season one uh has has been a really bonding experience but season two funnily enough even with the whole you know world situation the COVID and everything you guys even like got closer which i think is like very interesting you know when you think about it you can't even hang out offset and, and stuff like that yeah uh, is there a cast member that you know in first season you were pretty close but season two has brought you even closer together yeah, I honestly, I I mean, everyone in general, yeah, like, kind of like Larry said, I, I feel like this season was even more of a bonding experience because, you know, the whole world was shut down. Um, mm. We kind of, while we were in Salt Lake, all we had were each other and we couldn't, you know, go hang out with each other because we're in a pandemic and we, yeah. you know, we would see each other on set, go home, but we would always still have weekly Zoom meetings where we would all get together and just talk mm. and check in on each other. Um, and all that. And I, I think, um, yeah, it was just a lot of fun. I, I will say, I mean, I, I'm super close with everyone. I, I love every single person, yeah. you know, on the show. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, I, I guess I can't really, you know, think of any individual person that I, I mean, I feel like Sophia and I probably got a little closer just cause we had a little bit more, um, scenes together this year, which was super fun. Oh, nice. Um, so yeah, I mean, cause Sophia and I didn't have many scenes together season one, um so yeah maybe maybe if i had to pick one person maybe sophia because we we had you know a few more scenes together this year um in regards to to that but yeah no this it, it, it was still so much fun and just like everyone's so amazing and i i haven't seen them in a few months and i miss them all so much so season three come on with the announcement so already. so season three please <laughs> please 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 yeah yeah, yeah 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 absolutely i mean and you talked about sophia so could we expect maybe another love interest after nini or is it's a wrap I, with I EJ? Don't, i don't i think ej is 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 really trying to kind of focus on what's important to him and mm. and you know kind of learn from other people as well in that and kind of let other people um, guide him in certain ways. And I think okay. there's certain things that he sees in other people where um, he, he is having this interaction with somebody and then he learns yeah. something about himself through that. And it kind of makes him more of a genuine person. And I think, I will say, I think that's something that I love about, um, you know, EJ and, and Gina's friendship is that they really are kind of coming from the same boat. Like season mm. one, they were really, kind of both you know bad guys if if you want to say that but um misunderstood yeah miss yeah they were both yeah, misunderstood yeah, yeah. and and you know gina is new to this school and ej's you know kind of this guy that's trying to put on this perfect persona and i think they're both this season starting to kind of find themselves and kind of figure mm -hmm. themselves out and figure out what they you know what they really truly want and love in life and and I think that the group is is it for both of them. I think just having this group of people is so important to both of them, and, and they really start to realize that. No, definitely. And it comes, like, right after first episode, you see that they're completely changed characters, which I yeah. think is, is really nice. Um, and then you talked about Josh. Let's talk about the bromance between you and Josh, because I feel Listen. like... Yeah, I could talk about Josh all day long. <laughs> I am. Uh, yeah, well, first of all, let's dish on Josh. Josh let's will pass it. Everything that's wrong with Josh. <laughs> um no li josh is literally like he is a brother to me and i mm. like i said season one it was so much fun getting to play um you know like i said my best friend's enemy so it yeah. was it was really fun there and this season we we got you know even closer because we actually lived at the same apartment complex we lived like four doors down from each other so oh, wow. we would be at work all day and then come home and he would come to my apartment or I would go to his and we would be like hanging out until like three in the morning. Um, go, we would go like to McDonald's at one in the morning or like make an avocado burger yes. at home or like just like chill. And it was it was so, so great. Um, I'm also I, I, I feel like I'm Josh's number one fan. I, I literally like fangirl out over his music more than I think some yes. of his fans do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm in the boat with you. I'm in the boat with you for sure. For I, sure. It, I just, I love the dude's voice. It's so good. And his sound. Can we talk his about sound, the EP? Oh it, my God. Just everything is so good. And he's got a new song coming out. Um, that's, that's even, I mean, it's just, it's all so good. Yes. On the I seventh, mean, I, I think. 
Uh, is it May 7th? Is that when it is? I think so. I should probably I think so. know that if I'm Josh's number one Yeah, fan. if you're the biggest fan. I don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, it's, it's a really, really, really great song. Um, and I'm excited for it to come out so I can download it and listen to it in the car every day. But oh, yeah, no. yeah. No, but honestly, um, if you guys like hang out so much, can we hear a collab at some point? Can we hear like a little Listen, I, I would love to do that. We'll see if that ends up happening. I feel like Josh's career, uh, music career is, is probably on a very different level than my music career because, and I say this because Josh has so <laughs> much. <laughs> I'm like, homeboy is dishing on himself right I, now. <laughs> no, 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 no. I say this because not anything bad towards myself. I, mm-hmm. I say that because I have never done any any professional music outside of the show. Josh is very focused on music, which is really mm-hmm. great. He should be. He's great at it. Um, yeah. But I will say, I have been trying to write a song for a minute now, for a few months. And uh, Josh has been helping me with it. And I say nice. helping me, like, he'll, he'll give me tips here and there, like, on just kind of songwriting techniques and stuff like that. And if mm-hmm. I have a guitar, you know little guitar melody i'll send it to him and be like what do you think of this or like some lyrics what do you think of this whatever yeah um you know i think some point in the future i would love to do something with josh because when we did the holiday special and did little saint nick that was a blast we had so much fun with that um so yeah i would love to do something with josh josh i don't know if you're watching this but come on probably not but it's out there (laughs) (laughs) probably not probably not you know people watch it but you know i feel like josh has has a like you said a music career to tend to well, Josh literally doesn't watch anything because he's always so busy. That's true. That's true. I mean, as he should be. You know what I mean? Well, as he I should mean, be. I, I agree. Right? I mean, you say that like, he's on a different level. Let's just get you there. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I agree. I think, I think it's just a matter of he's got much more music experience than I. And I'm not saying that in, in any bad way towards myself. I'm very happy with, you know, where I'm at. I'm very proud of where I'm at it. musically. But, um, but yeah, I think, I think the more experience I get with it, the, the more I would be ready to kind of do something with Josh. Because I also, just for my own personal thing, I, I don't want to do anything with with Josh or Olivia or anyone until I'm to like the level that I would be comfortable <laughs> being in a song with Josh or Olivia. Because <laughs> they're yeah, both yeah, so yeah. good. Yeah, um, yeah. So yeah, you know. I mean, do you think you would go down the country route? I think I would really, really love to kind of, although sometimes this really doesn't work for people when they try it. I think it would be really fun to try and kind of merge country and pop a little bit. Um, I mean, not Lana too much country, it. not... Yeah. Well, you're not wrong. <laughs> maybe, maybe not to that extent, but yeah. I don't know. We'll see. I think, I think there would definitely be a little, a little country feel in it. But I also don't think I would be like George Strait country. I, I, I wouldn't be like full blown that side of country. Um, it would probably have a little, little poppy feel. So you're serving a little bit of Taylor Swift kind of vibe, a little bit, kind of like a little bit, merging. a little early yeah. Taylor, a little early Taylor vibes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I see yeah. it. I will download for sure. For okay. sure. All right. Cool. Yeah. I got you. What do you think is the key to having a successful bromance? I mean, I'm asking for myself because um, in this pandemic, I don't, I don't, I lost all my social skills. Listen, I think the key. Hey, I can feel you there. Um, <laughs> I think the key, like Josh and I, I that's a great question. I don't know. I think just like okay. the, I don't I, like literally the dude is like my go-to for everything. Like if I need to talk to someone about something, mm-hmm. I go to him. Like. Josh knows more about me than my parents know about me. Um, yeah. Josh knows more about me than my dog knows about me. I, I like, I literally go to that dude for everything. He, I, I feel like he comes to me for a lot, um, just advice and just like in general, like if we're both bored, we'll call and just chat and like, yeah, just like, I don't know. I guess just having that, that, uh, you know, communication, I guess it almost feels like a relationship at this point. Like we're in deep. Sometimes. Yeah. It, it feels like it's even more – like you're even more involved than, than you yeah. know. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean that's great to hear because, you know, I always wonder – I mean that's kind of what we do with my friends. Like you talk about sunri- songwriting. Um, both yeah. of my friends are writing music right now. Um, oh, I'm not supposed to say that. Anyway, yeah, I feel like I can great. totally sense the, the kind of urge of like writing music together. I mean yeah. I'm rooting for the duet. I'm rooting for – everything that's going on here and if we can see more hey. of that on the show we're all winners i i think i think a possible i think a po- you know if if season three happens i think i think 
there will probably be a little bit more EJ Ricky uh, friendship there. I I hope at least I hope because yeah. I feel like it was starting to move that direction and in, in season two and and we'll see what happens in the future. I would love a I gotta go my own way duet like something like that. That'd be could hilarious. you imagine? I mean, they <laughs> they would and they would have so much fun with that too. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. one of my favorite things in season one was uh, at the I, th- I believe it was Thanksgiving. And when they get up and they both stand up and do like the the Ryan Sharpe like yes boom, boom, ma, ma, yes like thing yeah. at each other when we were yeah. filming that it, we had so much fun doing that and it Aww. took so many takes because we were laughing so much like I just anything like goofy with that guy is is hilarious I, I think mean... we make each other laugh more on set like if one of us busts out in the scene it's it's probably because the other one said or did something. <laughs> But it comes through, you know, like, even though, like, sometimes, like, you ruin the scene, a little clip of that sometimes makes the cut because it brings, like, oh, that yeah. genuineness, right? I mean, yeah, come on. Yeah, for sure. I love to hear it. Um, I want to know, this is, like, a kind of, like, a make or break question. If you had to pick yeah. between your red Chevy and Joshua Bassett, who would have to go? <laughs> Listen, <laughs> um... <laughs> No, I was I was gonna say my car just because like my car is my baby and I love that thing. But um, mm-hmm. I and not to get sappy here. Don't don't mm-hmm. think I'm getting sappy. It's but okay. cars are replaceable. Um, good good people and and genuine people are are. I mean, they're not replaceable. Like, you know, if, if yeah, something yeah, yeah, happened yeah, yeah. to, if something happened to the car, I can get another like car. Like if something happened to Josh, like that, like that would, yeah. So I, uh, I think, I think I'll have to, you know, go with Josh. I mean, I have a perfect way to phrase that to pin it on a cushion. Cars come and go. Joshua Bassett is forever. Joshua Bassett's forever. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Joshua yeah, Bassett's that's... forever. Um, yeah, no, I mean, I mean, you know, like I said, he's, he's one of my best friends and I, I, you know, am very grateful for that. So I, Sweet. as much as I hate to say it, if it, if, if it was between one or the other and I, I would not live if I kept both, mm-hmm. I would, I would probably pick Josh because at least I have a friend that I can like, <laughs> gosh. that you can mourn the loss of your car with. Yeah, Not no one sure. told Josh that though. Please, like, don't <laughs> tell Josh. He can't know that. <laughs> I'll, he'll he'll hang it over your head. I love it. I love no, it. No, he'd probably tell me I was stupid for not picking the car. Honestly. Oh, I'm loving that energy even more, for sure, for yeah. sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about you more, because you have a very interesting background. You grew up in Rogers, Arkansas. Um, you have a sh- very strong family values. How has it been moving to LA from a small town where kind of everyone knows everyone to LA where everyone wants to become someone? It's a very mm. different vibe. What, like how, what has been the yeah. most shocking part about moving? I think back in 2012, I believe. Yeah. Wow. You know, everything. That's great. My uh, research. <laughs> I, that I can tell. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I think, uh, it, it was definitely tough at first. Like my mom, you know, and I moved out to California, just us two originally. And, um, my brother, sister, and dad all stayed, stayed in Arkansas. And, you know, we went back, uh, twice a year, I think summer and Christmas typically to, to see them and kind of see family and just be with everyone. And I still try to go back as much as often, uh, yeah. to see all them. But it was definitely hard. Like it, it sucked at first, like not being around my family all the time. Because at the time, I was thirteen or fourteen whenever I first moved to California. So, oh, wow. um, I was used to you know being with them every single day, and it was definitely a different vibe on you know the family side of things, and then also mm-hmm. just like the feel of like the city because I like you said I grew up in a really small town and everybody yeah. knows everybody and. In LA, weirdly enough, I feel like everybody does know everybody, but um, so true. It's it, like yeah, <laughs> but it's in a different way. Like like driving around Arkansas, you know, you see ten cars pass by, and you probably know eight of those ten people. Like oh wow. like it, it's. I mean, I, I feel like it definitely is a smaller town where a lot of people know a lot of people, and everyone kind of has relationships in certain ways. And mm. whereas LA, it's much bigger, and there's a lot more people, and it's much more spread out. Um, it's definitely a lot uh, higher energy and higher paced in LA, which was hard to get used to at first. Um, okay. But now, whenever I go back to Arkansas and I'm there for a couple weeks, I'm like. This is, there's nothing to do here. What do I, like, what am I doing? 
Yeah. Um, so yeah, but I, you know, I still miss, I'm like super homesick right now. Um, cause I haven't been, I haven't gotten to go visit family in over a year just because oh, wow. of kind of the pandemic and work and everything. I, I haven't had a chance to, but, um, super homesick. So it definitely, it definitely has its times where like, I'm ready to get down, like back home, see mm. family, kind of have that like lower pace, just chill for a little bit. Um, but yeah, it, going back there for too long, I'm like, okay, let's get back to California. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, I feel like that's the thing about small towns. I, I grew up in a, in a small town next to Montreal and I thought it was fast paced until I went to LA and I was like, Oh yep. no, no, absolutely yep. not. And then you go back home and you're excited to see your family. Like you mentioned, but you kind of realize that, Oh, what should we do? And then it's like, well, this is it. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> it's like do. you go out, you go like out on the boat on the lake or like you go like off road, which I love to off road. You go like off road, go to the lake or like go eat food. Although That's they it. did just put a Top Golf in, I don't know if you know what Top Golf is, but it's like I don't. It's... Tell me about it. Okay, first of all, I love <laughs> golf. If anyone doesn't okay. know, I I love golf. Okay. But Top Golf is basically it's it's basically like ski ball but golf. Um, so there's like the, kind of it's like <laughs> you're on these tiered <laughs> these tiered like platforms, so like a driving range, and like you're okay. hitting these balls out into this field, and there's a bunch of little kind of uh like their flags all around this this field that they've built with netting all around it and they're mm. all different colors and different like lengths and ranges and all this and that yeah and the goal there they have different game modes but for just like normal top golf the goal is okay. to hit um the further you hit the ball and the closer to one of those flags the more points you get okay and so if you hit like there's one that may be like 20 yards in front of you that's really small and if you hit it into that, you get like 20 points. But if you hit the one all the way at the back of the range, that's really big and all the way at far in the back, like 250 yards away, you get like 200 points. So okay. it's like, it's kind of a game of like, like trying to aim and be good at golf, but also yeah. like, it's so much fun if you're not good at golf, cause you can just go out and hit and like, not to, I, t I've talked about Josh way too much in this. This is a problem, but Josh and I, like I went obsession. to top golf and, uh, <laughs> We went to Top Golf, and um, sorry, Josh, but he is not good at golf. And uh, he did great. He beat me in one of the games, and it was it was a great time. So, um, but yeah, no, it's it's super fun. Arkansas has a Top Golf. That's where I was getting with that. They just put okay. in a new Top Golf in in Arkansas. So there's kind of something there to do in the summertime. There's a little water park, and you know, there's things to do here and there. But uh, it's definitely slower paced and and not as much as California. Right. Are there any Top Golfs in California? I don't know. I know the closest one to LA is in Las Vegas. So okay. I don't know if there's one maybe in like Northern California, but I know okay. there's not one in Southern California. Um, but Vegas is, I've been to the one in Vegas once and it's, it's really fun. Okay. So we'll go to Vegas and we'll go to Top Golf for sure. Down. For sure. Down. I suck at golf. You know, we do like comp company, like golf tournaments every time. Yeah. And I always end up in the golf cart, like drinking the entire time. Like that's kind of like <laughs> where I lie. With golf, See, but... that's hilarious. That's hilarious. yeah. No, I'm I'm too competitive to like not go and play and like try to beat everyone. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That's no, that's where I'm always at. For sure, for sure. I mean, so we kind of touched on this, but what is one essence of Arkansas that you'd love to bring to LA, apart from your family, of course? Uh, probably, I would say the people. Um, and I, I mean no disrespect to the people of California, um, mm. but our, you know, where I grew up, people are just so much more down to earth and humble. And, and like, I, like, I promise Southern hospitality is a thing. And I don't know if you really understand that until you go to a different place. That's not the South. And like, it's just crazy how, how, how just how much nicer people are in Arkansas. And like I said, I don't mean that in any disrespectful way to, to people in California, because people in California are great. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But it's just it's just there's something different about, you know, like people in Arkansas will absolutely go out of their way to do absolutely anything for you. And it's like no matter like no matter if they know you, if they don't know you, like I, people, the people are just great there. So I would say maybe just kind of bringing a little bit more of that that hospitality and, and okay. kind of down to earthness to, to California. Okay. Is this your, your first time in Canada, like staying in Canada? This is my first time in Canada. This is my first time out of the United States. 
I've never, oh I've my never, gosh. I know, and I've never even, now I know Hawaii and Alaska are still the United States, I yeah, was, yeah, yeah. but I've never even like been, I've never even been off the mainland of the United States, I've never been to Hawaii, I've never been to Alaska, which I know is still like attached, but yeah, yeah. this is, this is my first time out of the uh, contiguous United States. Oh my god, so you'll get to discover Canadian hospitality, which, yes, which I already kind of have a little bit, like okay. Canadians are okay. so nice. Thank you. Like, Thank you. <laughs> like they're so nice. Like uh, I got picked up at the airport, and the driver that drove me here was like the nicest dude. And then the kind of the people that work here at these apartments are great. And like, yeah, it's just it's crazy. I'm very excited uh, to to be out of quarantine and get to go uh, explore the city and and kind of walk around. Obviously, everything's closed, but like, yeah. so there's not too much to do. But but I'm excited to get to experience. I'm, it I'm excited that you're in Toronto. It's one of my favorite cities. Uh, it's literally like two hours away from me. Honestly, just Give me a review on your stories when you do uh, try Tim Hortons. I got you. Tim Hortons. I got you. Like, okay, so you got to get an ice cap, okay? Is this is... a restaurant? Oh, Matt. Matt, let me just introduce to you the magic okay. of Tim Hortons. Okay. Okay. So Tim Hortons is kind of our version of Dunkin' Donuts, but just like a thousand times better. So, like, um, we don't have a lot of Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> what, is that? what is that face? <laughs> That was an excited face. I will okay, say I cool. got I got Krispy Kreme here the other day, and I had a okay. like, U- Uber Eats to my place. And mm-hmm. I'm sorry, Canada, but your Krispy Kreme is not as good as American Krispy Kreme. That is for sure true. That that is. True. <laughs> but Tim Hortons. Okay, so you get an ice. It's like um, it's our Tim Hortons was a hockey player, a Canadian hockey okay. player, and he started this franchise of kind of places where. Every morning when – I mean, in America, it's kind of baseball. For us, it's hockey. Every morning when you got to go yep. to practice, you stop by. You get a donut and a coffee. It's kind of like our go-to place uh, for sandwiches, Dang. lunch. It's it's our joint. So you got to get an ice cap, which is an ice cappuccino. It's like a slushy, but a cappuccino. Very delicious. Okay. I'm going to mm-hmm. – I literally, after I get off this call, I'm going to Postmates Uber eat some to my place. Yeah. Okay. Why not? Okay. And then I need to or should I it. wait until I'm out of quarantine and actually like experience it fresh? I mean, it's gonna be fresh if you get it at your door, though. It, it will be. Sometimes, pretty... sometimes it takes forever to get here. I don't know about Toronto Uber Eats, but whenever you do, try an ice cap and Timbits because okay. Timbits are donut Timbits. holes. Um, yeah, you guys call them monkey bread. What do you guys call? It? I think it's like. Is it like little... cinnamon? No, 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 not like that. Oh, okay. okay, it's not monkey okay. bread. I'm so it's, sorry. Yeah, I was about to say because <laughs> so monkey bread is monkey bread is like my. I love cinnamon. Okay, so okay, monkey okay. bread is my thing. My, okay. oh, I love it. Okay, okay. sorry. Uh, I mean, t- tidbits or tim tim bits. Tim, like Tim Hortons. So Tim. Oh, I see. Bits. Tim bits. Got yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. And then get the variety pack. You can try all the flavors. I'm so excited for you. Discovering Tim Hortons for the first time is always a good time. Oh, this is going to be – life is about to get that much better. That much better. We had Meg Donnelly on a few weeks ago. And oh, yeah. She, yeah, yeah. She was just like, oh, like, you know, I'm going to Canada soon. And then she was just like – the first story she took was her in t- with Tim Hortons. I was like, my girl, my girl. That's yeah. amazing. <laughs> That's, I've known Meg for so long. We worked on a pilot together years ago. Really? Um, for Nickelodeon, yeah, it was, oh. it was, uh, yeah, it was a pilot for Nickelodeon. Didn't end up getting picked up, but it was so much fun. Um, and I haven't, I haven't seen her in a minute. I've like talked to her here and there on the phone, but I haven't mm-hmm. seen her in a minute. But um, I'll have to, I'll have to text her and and ask her uh, where uh, where, where are the closest because I think she's in Toronto as well. Because I think yes, the thing that in... she's working on is in Toronto. Um, yeah, yeah, she's working on on Zombies Three. Yeah, so, Zombies yeah, Three yeah. right now. Yeah. No. I mean, let me know. Let me know what you think. I'm excited. I'll, for you I'll to let try you know it. how Tim how Tim Hor- Tim Hortons. Yeah, but you can say like Tim Timmy's. Hortons. It's just wait. Timmy's. Easier. All right. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Get, get yourself. Some if Timmy's. I say Timmy's, will people here know what I'm talking about? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. That they'll actually think you're local for calling oh, it Timmy's. It's, yeah, yeah. It's like it's like calling McDonald's in Australia Maccas or M- 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 Maccas. I think I have a friend. I have some friends in Australia that call McDonald's Maccas, like M A C C A S. Really? Yeah, wow. but it's like with their England? awesome Australian accents. So I'm not even gonna try it because I'll butcher it. But like, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I think I, in England they call it Mac D's or like Mac Mac. I call it Mickey D's. Okay, okay. I call it yeah, Mickey D's. Mickey D's. 
McD's. Yeah. yeah, I like it. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, no, I, I, I've heard them call it Macca's, but I like it's so much better with their Australian accent. Everything is better with an Australian accent. Try I, it. I swear. Try it. Try it. Mm. Try the, no, try I can't. The I'll embarrass myself. <laughs> I'll, I'll full blown embarrass myself. That's okay. It's okay. Um, what is one assumption? Because I think it's it's really cool how much you can find about you about people on the internet. I think it's kind of creepy sometimes how much you can find about someone mm. on the internet. Yeah. Um, but I want to know what is one assumption that you think people have about you that you want to like debunk that you you're just like let me come clean about this assumption that people have about me. Uh. I don't know. I mean, I think a lot of people just think because I'm from Arkansas, I'm like a like a big old hillbilly, which I'm definitely okay. not. Okay. Um, I think people, I think people just associate everything that is like the South with anybody that's from the South, mm. which like you know, teach their own. But but uh, I'm definitely I'm definitely less Arkansas than you probably think I am. But I still have like my little bits of Arkansas. I love trucks. I love big trucks. Yeah, I love yeah. off roading. I love all of that. Um, but I love camo. Like see, like little bits yeah, here yeah, and there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, I've got the Arkansas. But I think a lot of people think I'm just a big old hillbilly <laughs> being from Arkansas. Uh, I also think a lot of people think that um, I've actually been told this by a lot of friends. Uh, like the first time that they met me. Um, okay. like that they, they thought, uh, for, for example, Sophia Wiley, not to call okay. her out, but okay. she, she told me before she met me, she was like, yeah, whenever I found out I booked the show and found out who was cast, I like kind of stalked everyone on Instagram. She was like, I'm not going to lie. You kind of came across as like kind of a douchebag on social media. Oh. Like I thought you, I thought you were going to be, I thought you were going to be like kind of a douchebag. And I was like, what? And what is I feel you? like I'm. I, I, I feel like it's like, I mean, I can understand to an extent, like sometimes some of my pictures look like the, you know, typical like teenage social media boy, but yeah, yeah, I yeah. will say I'm very opposite of that. I am probably <laughs> the goofiest person you'll ever meet in your life. So it comes through. It comes through for sure. For sure. Yeah. Now you're not as Arkansas as people think you are. You can't take the small, you can take the, the guy out of the small town, but you can't take the small town out of the boy. But exactly. I, I feel like everybody who moves to LA changes a little bit. And I think mm. it's sometimes for the better, sometimes for the worse, let's be honest. How do you think like being in the entertainment industry and moving to LA and like being with such a diverse cast, like the Castle High School Musical, how do you think it's affected or changed you? That's a great question. Um, I think it is probably, I've definitely, I know a lot of people um, kind of when they move out of where they grew up from, they kind of lose their, their morals and their values and kind of, mm. you know, things like that. And, you know, lose where they came from and lose like where, you know, they were raised. And yeah, yeah, yeah. that's something that I still hold very near and dear to me is, is my morals and my values. And I, I stand true to them, stand strong with them. But um, I think something that probably changed is I'm, I feel like I'm a lot now granted. I also was really young whenever I moved here um, right. or moved to California I don't know. I feel like I was, I'm much more, gosh, I don't even know. I don't even know. I, I, <laughs> I'm going to have to think about that one. That's, that's great. I've got to think about like what's changed about me. I mean, cause like a lot of times I like to say, Oh, I haven't changed, but I'm sure like I have, like there's yeah, things yeah. that have changed. Um, Are you vegan yet? No. <laughs> I'm not vegan. No. I can't. I love. I love. I'm so sorry, but I love meat. No, you're good. Me too. <laughs> I I love my meat, and I I love having a good old steak sometimes. And I I'm so sorry to the vegans and vegetarians, but yeah, we love you guys. <laughs> we, we, I love you so much, and I can yeah. understand where you're coming from. But yeah. um, I love steaks. He's from the South. Come on. What do you expect? You know, <laughs> I mean, like I like and whenever I go back home, I. Yeah, you just can't like you can't be from yeah. Arkansas and be I mean, you can, but props to those people, because when you go yeah. back to Arkansas and my family cooks out and barbecues and all that, it's like it, I, there's no way I would have the self-control not to eat it. You know, it's funny. My dad is a huge barbecuer too, and I went to LA once, and like one of my friends showed me like a documentary that traumatized me, and I came back home and I was like, "I'm gonna be vegan mm -hmm. for like a month," and he's like, "You're gonna eat what I give you," and I was like, "Okay." <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then that yeah. was the end of yeah. that. That was the end of that. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, okay, well, it didn't change you too much, but I feel like, you know, L.A. does change people sometimes for the better in terms of, like, oh, you yeah. get exposed to so much. It's it's such a, an, uh, a diverse yeah, uh, I, place. I, that's the thing. I think it, I think it kind of, um, I think it kind of makes me a little bit more understandable from a lot of people's perspectives as well. Yeah. And like a lot of different, you know, just there's, there's so many different people in in California in general, like LA, yeah. especially like yeah. it's, there's so much representation and, and, you know, diversity. And I, I yeah. love that. And I just love like, yeah, it just, it kind of opened your eyes to a lot of things because in Arkansas, there's a lot of, you know, there, there's a lot of people that are just one type and that's how yeah. it is. And, uh, that's, you know, I think it's great that, that there's, there's so much for your eyes to be opened up to in, in California. And, and that's, I guess that's one thing is like, my eyes have been opened up to a lot and I'm, I'm very, very understanding of, of a lot of new, you know, things and, and everything. Yeah, no, that's awesome. That's what life should be all about. I'm loving yeah, this. Yeah. And trying to understand, you know, people and trying to kind of, understand perspective. people's perspectives yeah. exactly yeah. yeah yeah like like everyone has a different perspective and and you know things that they're experiencing in life and and that's something i think that's really important is to try to understand everybody's perspective and like learn where everyone's coming from and learn you know all that and be able to help in the ways that you can and and you know just yeah i think it's great i love it i'm loving it okay well the we're gonna play a game because i feel like all right we do Sunset Drive after dark, which is technically just an excuse for me to get my friends that I've already had on back on the show to like just hang out <laughs> for an hour. <laughs> Great. Um, but in after dark, we kind of go off topic. We give advice, uninformed advice, um, which is something we'll implement in a normal episode today. Um, I asked people what what game um, they would like for us to play, and all of them said dating advice with Matt and Anthony. So people randomly out there submitted their questions and we have to give them advice you know i'm like... <laughs> so bad at dating advice i'm Same. i'm like i am the worst person to come to with dating advice i'll be there to listen like if mm -hmm. you need to come to me and talk to me about mm -hmm. you know relationship stuff i am always there to listen i am the worst at dating advice but let's try it <laughs> <laughs> i mean just some good dating advice from brother matt and anthony All right, i mean i, I this, this is gonna be awful but I, it's always good i always like to say take these advice with a grain of salt we are not with a to grain trust of salt. it yeah we are please, not to trust it please. with your dating life yeah so the first question we have uh the questions are always anonymous of course how do you get over someone without closure oh mm. mm, that's good can i go first i have an i have an answer yeah go yeah go for okay. it how do you get over someone without closure? I think in life, and this is something that I learned going on 21 this year, actually, um, you cannot control how people react around you. You cannot create other people's like behavior. So if somebody else is not giving you closure, you kind of have to find it within yourself, whether that's like mm. taking their number out of your phone or taking pictures out of your phone, doing the small things that in the long run will benefit you. Matt, what's your take on this? Yeah, I think that's, I think it's really important just to kind of, um, kind of take it upon yourself to, like you said, find it, you know, in your own certain ways, because yeah. at the end of the day, you can't control what other people do and, and they can't control what you do. And, and if you need to do something, um, to help yourself kind of get over a relationship or, or, yeah. or, you know, get over someone or get closure about something, then I think you need to do whatever you need to do. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I had a really great point that I was going to make, but now I forgot what it was. It's okay. If, if, if you remember it, we'll come back I'll on come it. Back I'll, it. I'll come back to it. I'll come back to it. I'll ask my editor, Erica, put it at this question. If we think about Sorry, it. Erica. I'm about to make this <laughs> real hard for you. <laughs> Erica's great. She'll love this. She'll love this. All right. Second question. I have never been in a relationship like ever. I wouldn't know where to start. Any tips? Did I write this? I no <laughs> yeah, no like i felt like i was being called out <laughs> i felt like i was being really called out i love okay. it i think Good. i think the most important thing is um don't go around looking for a relationship um i think i think a relationship needs to find you and i feel like it's not something that it's not going to be a good relationship if you're looking for one if i think mm. it needs to be something that kind of just hits you out of nowhere and it's like yeah. a genuine connection with somebody and um, I know for me personally, like it's super important, just like 
when I'm with someone, I think a big indicator for me is just like when I'm with them, like I don't think about anything else. All I think about is like who I'm with Mm -hmm. and that I just want to be with them and have such a good time. And I think, I think you'll, you'll know whenever, you know, somebody is the right person for you. And when somebody is, you know, somebody that you want to be in a relationship with, I think it'll, it'll make itself very apparent. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think the biggest thing is don't, don't go looking for a relationship because, because a good one won't come out of that. He said he wasn't good at advice. Look at him. Look at him go. Is this good (laughs) advice or is this just, nah. It's decent, like, dad advice, I feel like. You know what I mean? See, like, that's hey, it. Kid. It's the dad advice. <laughs> yeah, I've got yeah, the yeah. dad jokes and the dad advice. Mm-hmm. Anyone who's like a that. dad joke, come to me. I love it. And you, you talked about time, spending time. Is your love language quality time? Uh, Most definitely quality time and physical touch. I'm very much so, like... A touchy person. Yeah, I'm, I'm very much, a like, a, you know, touchy person in, in a consensual way with, you know, with <laughs> consent. I know that's a that's a big thing going around right now. I want to make sure I, I make that known. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, but not not in any bad way. Like just like I I love I love you know holding hands and like just having my arm around somebody and like yeah. hugging and just like having my hand on their knee or like what like I I very much so a, a very physical person. Okay. Um, and, and not only with people that like I I like on like a like a um, relationship Romantic, level, yeah. but. Yeah, not somebody like that I like romantically, just like friends in general. I'm I'm a mm. very huggy person. I'm a very like I just am. That's just me. But I feel like that's yeah. also the the south in me is is I'm a hugger. I we love to see it. We really do. <laughs> <All right. laughs> the next one is a guy is picking on me. Do you think it's because he likes me? Um okay. I listen. I mm-hmm. had I had in was this first grade there was a girl that okay. was very um i i would i guess i would say she picked on me a lot and i was okay. very new to this school and um she was not very nice to me and anytime she would do something mean the teacher would always be like oh it's just because she likes you and i'm like yeah n- n- now looking at it i don't think that's good advice i think i th- i do I think agree. if it's a pl- i i do think if it's a playful like picking mm-hmm. then mm-hmm. i think that's different than somebody picking on you to be like uh, like uh, to pick on you in a mean way like yeah. i think it's very different i think it depends on the the picking if it's like playful and like because like whenever i'm i'm interested in someone i'm very playful with them and i'll pick on them yeah, here and yeah. there and just like yeah. but in a playful manner i feel like the yeah. keyword is playful there Hmm. i would agree i don't like how I feel like it's little girls a lot of the time. You tell them, oh, it's because he likes you. He's pulling out your pigtails. Mm -mm. Maybe he does. He's got to – if you give him the satisfaction, then he'll keep doing it. He's going to keep doing it. Yep. Right. So you got to be like, no, that's not how it goes. That's a good advice, Matt. Look at you go. Look at you go. Hey, I'm on a roll. You're on a roll. We have three left. I'm doing long distance. It's hard. Any advice? Mm long distance is real hard i've i've done long distance and it's it's extremely hard i think the key uh and not only for long distance but just any relationship is communication 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 Mm. and i think long distance especially um you should try and talk as much as you possibly can Uh, facetime or or skype or zoom or whatever as much as you can video chat as much as you can um Mm. and i think also it's important to set little date nights like if you're if you're away from each other like dedicated night to have like a date night and whether that's yeah. like hop on facetime and watch the same movie in, in your own you know respective places or like get on facetime and like order mcdonald's and sit and eat mcdonald's over facetime like i think just having that quality time um is very important and making sure you're dedicating that quality time that's such good advice. I was just gonna say, go on Zoom and play Mario Kart against each other. I think well, that's better. okay. That's honestly probably better advice, right? Just mm. get some Mario Kart and play some Mario Kart. Dude, Mario Kart is just yeah. like that's the game. The that is game. The game. Mario Kart. <laughs> yeah. Mario Party. I'm for it. Okay, thousand percent. See, we'll play after this. We're making so many plans yep. already. Um, Damn. Okay, two more questions for the dating advice because I feel like we're – Matt's giving so much good advice. But, you know, we don't want to get to one question where you're kind of stumped 
you know? <laughs> true, true, um, true. This one is a really interesting one. How do you know when a relationship is toxic? Oh, I, I think it's, I think it's, oh, I, I, in my head, I'm like, oh, that's obvious. But then again, it's yeah. like, oh, um, it's hard because love, love can make you do some, some crazy things. And, mm. um, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say anyone or name any names, but I, I personally know some people that were in a very toxic relationship. And yeah. to me, an outsider, it was so extremely obvious that mm -hmm. it was a toxic relationship but to my friend, they were just like, no, I, I, I love this person. I'm in love with this person. It's a perfect relationship. And, and yeah. you know, me and that person's friends were all just like, no, it's not like it's not healthy. It's not whatever. So um, I think a, and a really important thing is to listen to what others are saying. And if somebody tells you like that something is not right and that this mm -hmm. is not normal and that whatever's happening in this relationship is not normal – um, it's probably not normal. They're not saying that just to say it, especially if more than one person is saying that. Um, I also think when it gets to a point that your communication starts to die down, um, okay. when you don't have the desire, I like, I swear by communication and relationships, it's such an important thing. It's something that I'm, I'm bad at at times. I'll, I'll admit, like I have to work on that, but, yeah. um, if, if you, if you don't have the desire to communicate as much anymore and like you, start to feel yourself um, trying to hide things from the other person or not mm -hmm. tell the other person something or beat around the bush around something yeah. because you're scared of the way they're going to react. That's a problem. And I mm. feel like that's something that is, that is very toxic um, in nature. So yeah, I think, I think those couple things are probably important, like uh, starting indicators maybe. I agree. I agree. I would say if you start making excuses for your partner and it starts creating frictions with the people that have been around you, like since like day one, that's your red flag, I think. Yes. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Well, that'll be all for the questions for dating advice with Matt and Anthony. Wow. Um, th I hope this helps. Um, if it doesn't, we're sorry. <laughs> sorry. Um, <laughs> In advance. Um, yeah, I mean, we did say take it with a grain of salt. So, we did. Um, fair warning. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Woohoo! Dating <laughs> advice. <laughs> oh, that's great. Well, we're gonna wrap up the episode because um, you have a hard out. I think at one. Um, so we will wrap this up uh, really quickly. Um, before we end everything, I want to know, um, where can people check you out? Um, what's next for Matt? Take us on this journey. <laughs> yeah. I, biggest, biggest way to stay up to date with stuff. I'm real bad at social media, but I try, mm -hmm. um, the biggest thing for me is, uh, is Instagram. Like I, I, everything I post mainly is on Instagram. I'm on Twitter okay. very, very little. Um, mm -hmm. and, and so I feel like Instagram is probably the key place to go um, if you if you want to you know catch up with what I'm doing and if you just kind of want to see what I do whenever I post then great. Um, also, uh, season two May 14th. Um, mm -hmm. Although this will already be out after season two has already started airing, so every Friday um, we can just Erica, you can just cut that. Um, <laughs> I appreciate. Uh, yeah, no, every Friday. Keep watching. It's such a good season. I'm working on another project right now that um, people are going to love. Okay. So, uh, yeah, it's it's really, really fun. Hopefully, uh, I, I'm not going to say when we can expect it, but I'm kind of hoping maybe within the next year. I'm not putting a time frame on anything, but hopefully You'll know when you soon. know. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you'll know, you'll when, know, you know when you know. Yeah. Watch my – watch. keep up with my Instagram, and you'll know when that, that, that project's coming. Okay, okay, I love to hear it. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Um, I always make it my goal that whenever we end an episode, people at home feel like they've met a friend, and we feel like we've made friends out of each other, so I hope people yes. enjoyed today's episode. Well, thank you so much for listening to today's episode, you guys. I'm Anthony Smith. And I'm Matt Cornett. Yup, and this has been Sunset Drive. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Next week on Sunset Drive, the musical, the series. <laughs> Don't never leave me. Even as she walks away. I don't know what this is. <laughs> I, mean, I saw it and I heard mm -hmm. it like. Ooh, okay. I love the little tease. He's like, I don't want to lose my job. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, I look this away for no one.
Yeah. Oh, and I just can't imagine how you could be so okay now that I'm gone. Wing one, you'll have to ask Joe. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> This episode was brought to you with the help of Disney+.